Thank you for joining me on my broadcast. I'm your host, Cool Clyde. We have some guests here tonight. Without any further delay, I'm going to bring them on and I want them to introduce themselves, give the viewers a little synopsis of who you are. I want to do something a little bit different that has never been done before. Let me start off with you, Brother Williams. Hello, my name is Brother Steve Williams. I've been with Pastor Geno Jennings for over 30 years in the truth of God. I've seen myself grow and develop off of his ministry. I've seen God do great things through this brother, Pastor Jennings. And I'm so thankful that God had blessed me and allowed me to be under his ministry and in the work of the gospel. Me and Pastor Jennings, God blessed us to be able to grow up together. So I got a chance to see him and got a chance to observe him. And I got a chance to see that how God was using him. God used him to bless me to open up my eyes. Mm. At one time I was believing in three gods, what people call the Trinity. Mm. I had the wrong baptism. I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I believed it was as I said, three gods. I didn't know that Jesus Christ was God. And I can remember we talking on the porch one day and he asked me a question. And he asked me, who's coming back for you? And my response was, I believe I said, Jesus. But I asked him the same question. And he said that Jesus, the Lord God Almighty was coming back for him. And that's the thing that knocked me to the floor, or knocked me to the ground. And from that day, God have allowed me and blessed me <clears throat> through his teaching to have my eyes come open. And I'm so grateful and thankful to be in the work of the Lord. I'm thankful for how God blessed the man of God to lay hands on me to read the scriptures for the man of God. So that's just a little bit about my that's background, spiritually brother. speaking. That's wonderful. And I'm thankful for how I'm here on this program with the man of God. I thank you. Well, let's talk to the man of God, our pastor. Brother Clyde, I'm glad to be back on your program again. I'm no stranger. Uh, I'm Pastor Jones of the Truth of God program. We give God thanks. Uh, for without him, we would not be where we are now. We have to exalt him above everything and anything, for God have no equals and no rivals. And I'm looking forward to have a very good discussion today. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to see what my brother have on the table and what he wants to discuss and see how we can compare these things with biblical principle. Because when the scripture says something, that just eliminates any room for argument or legitimate argument or justifiable contradiction. Wonderful. Well, viewers, I just want also to add, originally uh, we had some other guests that were scheduled to be here. And I would say from the very beginning, uh, Brother James M. Toomey, Mr. Juicy Fruit Man, a lot of you guys must know him from New York Undercover. Uh, he produced songs for Stephanie Mills and so many other artists, uh, Phyllis Hyman. Uh, for many years, I've been trying to get him. He said he would do the interview, and for whatever reason, um, he just never came through to do the interview, so I'm going to be very honest. Um, I also reached out to the Nation of Islam, Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, was supposed to be here today in this interview, uh, and I also asked him would he be able to get Minister Farrakhan in studio or on the phone or on Skype. Uh, he began to let me know that um, Minister Farrakhan is uh, doing selective interviews and that also Minister Farrakhan um, basically passed the torch. So Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, which is um, the regional uh, leader for 20 cities agreed to reschedule 
with Pastor Gino Jennings. So we're looking forward to bringing these guys back into the studio so we could uh, go full throttle about the truth of God. Well, let me ask you a question. I want to start off, and I want to be very, I want to really talk to uh, the premature. Mm -hmm. Those that really <clears throat> in their heart want to serve God. I'm not dealing with the atheists right now. I'm not dealing with those that say I heard of God or I was in church. I'm not trying to hear all that right now. I'll get back to that later. I want to deal with those that sincerely God is touching their hearts and they don't know which way to go. They're being pulled from this way. They walk out of the apartment. Somebody's handing, handing them literature. Somebody's telling them that that literature is not the truth. Uh, they see pastors molesting children. They see uh Pastors are lying. All kind of stuff that's going on in, in, in the churches. So they are lukewarm. They don't know which way to go. What advice would I say to those individuals? I want to talk to them and I want to breastfeed them as if they still have the umbilical cord attached to their mom. So I don't want to go too deep. Mm -hmm. Although, Pastor, we're going to go deep sea scripture scuba diving. And I hope you got <laughs> your seatbelt on, brother. No salt. No sugar. Mm -hmm. Salt, brother. First of all, a seeker is vulnerable if they're hungry for information. Uh, they're in danger of taking in all kind of information. And what happened in 99.9 .9 cases, once they take in a variety of religious beliefs, they're worse than they were before they went out there seeking. Because now, when they are blessed to come into the knowledge of the truth, the truth have to undo so much that was done. Mm. Just say if they're introduced to the Trinitarian doctrine, now they believe it's three gods, they fall out with that, they join the Jehovah Witnesses, now they believe it's two gods, or they believe there is no hell. They leave that and join Scientology, they're attracted to that because there's a bunch of celebrities in it, or they leave that and join the Mormons and believe they can have about 40 or 50 wives. They are full of pollution with no solution. And mm. the only solution that will rid them of the religious bacteria that they will catch from all this religion is when they get an ear and be willing to hear. One thing about truth, it have a distinctive sound from anything. If you put an engine of a 442 out on the road and then pull up with the quiet Cadillac, you will tell the difference from a 442 versus that Cadillac. That's the way the truth of the gospel is. If an individual is hungry and really sincere, God will never allow that man or woman to keep drifting without finding what God wants them to have. And a perfect example is that is the 10th chapter book of Acts of the Apostles. There was a gentleman named Cornelius who was an Italian. Mm. He was a devout man. And he prayed and took the degree until an angel came to him. And the angel wanted him to know so perfectly God's will until he gave him Peter's address and told him where Peter was staying. He told him, send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, who larger one Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. When he come, he will tell you what you got to do. Mm. So if a brother or sister is sincere, God will not allow their sincerity uh, be taken for granted. Now, if that individual decided to read the Holy Scriptures. Do they start from Genesis to Revelations? Do they start from the Old Testament to the New Testament? Do they start from the New Testament to the to the Old Testament? Do they throw up a coin in the <laughs> air and flip and decide? Or do they wait on Almighty God to show them? And how would they know that's God telling them what scripture they should yeah, That's a very good question. First and foremost, how would they know? How would you know whether God is talking to you if you don't know who God is? If they start in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, that's fine. Let them start in the beginning. Learn how many created the heavens and earth. Learn uh, who is God and the different things that God done from the Old Testament church, the children of Israel, the signs and wonders that he wrought, the battles that he won in their behalf. Uh, yes, it is good to start to the Old Testament, but in the midst of all reading, reading without understanding doesn't help none. Well, there we go. That whether, whether you read from Old Testament or New, mm -hmm. reading without proper guidance and without understanding 
doesn't help anyone. Well, maybe they could go to a Bible school, Bible <laughs> study. If they go to Bible college, they may as well not read at all because the information of God will not be in the Bible college. The Bible college have taught so many things that churches are jumped to, hollered to, screamed to, ran around to, and 99% of it have never been in the Bible. Five minor prophets and five major. You learn that from Bible college. Uh, the earth turned on its axles. You learn that from Bible college. Jesus is a little God and the Father is a big God. You learn that from Bible college. Uh, there are seven dispensations. You learn that from a Bible college. Mm -hmm. Five minor prophets, five major. Peter was crucified, head down, feet up. Paul died at Nero's chopping block. John died 96 AD in a pot of boiling oil. There's a whole lot of stuff. Never been in the Bible, but it's taught in Bible college. In the college, you learn philosophy. And the scripture says in the book of Colossians, let's read that. In the book of Colossians, let's see how God looks at the usage of philosophy. In Colossians chapter 2 and at verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So like I said, the individual you described, they're vulnerable. They can't tell the difference from philosophy, from the wisdom of God. So until they learn the wisdom of God through proper teaching, they will call philosophy the wisdom of God, and they'll call the wisdom of God philosophy. In order for you to be a pastor, don't you have to have some sort of doctorate's degree? <laughs> I mean, to solidify that you are a sincere, genuine pastor? I believe the book of Scripture. Aren't you supposed to be registered? I believe the Scripture says how God will give them pastors after my own heart. The Lord says he will do it. A pastor is a shepherd, and a true shepherd, a true leader, uh, one, he'll follow the rules of God, the regulations of God, the standards of God, and the laws of God. Two, he will lead the people according to the scriptures. And if you lead the people according to the scriptures, first and foremost, he will always put God in front of the people. Three, he will never get paid to preach. Wait a minute. He will never get paid to preach. Any preacher that get paid to preach, no, I mean, he's not a pastor that God gave them. He's a businessman. School don't make preachers. Preacher is a divine act of God. It takes God to make a preacher. I've heard um, from Minister Farrakhan say, and I, I had to really listen. He said, T.D. Jakes is a great, 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 great pastor. <laughs> now, T.D. Jakes is one of the great, 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 great preachers. I said that four times. Mm -hmm. I had to play it back. Is T.D. Jakes a great pastor? T.D. Jakes is a great, 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 did I say four? Yes, you did. Liar. Why? First and foremost, a pastor, naturally, a shepherd that loves his sheep will never lead them to a pasture that's unhealthy or that's dried up. Mm. But he leads them to green pasture. So what it, makes you so more qualified than him? The only thing that can make any man more qualified than the other is God himself. Pastoring is a divine act of God. It is not a hype. It is not show business. It is not entertainment. One must be made of God, taught of God, instructed of God, and then the fear of God must be in that man. If not, he's not going to lead the people, right? T.D. Jake is a good motivational speaker, mm. but he's not motivating you to quit sin. He's not motivating you to live right. Motivational speakers are centered around thing, one thing in the pulpit, money, wealth, prosperity, cars, houses, jets, airplanes. That's it. That's their motivation. A real man of God motivates you first and foremost to obey God, learn God, live for God, and if need be, die for God. Well, there are many people might say you read from the Holy Scriptures. Somebody say they read from the Bible. The word Bible is never written in the, in the, in the Bible. Uh, well, Where did they get their name the from? The word Bible is not in there. Uh, I believe one uh, acronym that I heard someone use, uh, B-I-B-L-E, basic instincts before leaving, or basic instructions before Life leaving ends, oh, earth. Yeah. You know? Something uh, like so, but scripturally, yes, the book was called Scriptures. Scripture. Okay. Uh, it is, it, I believe the book of Scripture says, whatsoever things are written a full time and written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Jesus said, search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Jesus also said, the error not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. So the term Bible, uh, no, it's not in the Scriptures. The Scriptures itself was uh, the prophets, Jesus, and the apostles addressed the book 
as scriptures. If one use the term Bible, that's up to them. But uh, the biblical term, or should I say the scriptural term for the book, the scripture. Was God created? God never was created. Does he have any cousins or uncles? No. <laughs> God is without beginning. God is without ending. The book of scripture says from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And no human being can go back to everlasting. There was a discussion that uh, the Nation of Islam and I had, I believe it was in 2005. And that was the topic. Uh, was God created? And they believe that God is self-made. He created himself out of what is called triple darkness, spinning in space, starting as a speck of light. And he starts spinning until he end up forming himself. Well, um, and that's saying that God didn't always exist. Wow. See, if you're saying God have a beginning, when a thing began, it wasn't always here. And if God had to come into being, who made him? And if you say he, you, he made himself, there is no scripture not in the book that we address as the Bible. There's no scripture in the Quran. Nothing. Nowhere. Is Jesus Christ God? Jesus. And is God Jesus Christ? <laughs> well, asked. let's read the book of Titus chapter 2, begin at verse 13 quickly. Titus 2, 13. Let's see what the book of Scripture says and then we'll explain that. Titus chapter 2 and at verse 13. Mm -hmm. The Scripture says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, here's three titles that Jesus have here. Blessed hope, mm -hmm. great God, our Savior. Then the book points out who he was talking to. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now, when you talk about God, you're talking about that which have never been begotten, that have no father, no mother. Uh, no relatives, no descent, no beginning, no ending. So when we talk about Jesus Christ as God, we're not talking about the flesh and blood man that walked this earth. That human body, the physical body, was not God. What was in that body was God, for the book says, to wit, God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself. So like when I had the discussion with the Church of God in Christ with uh, Minister Dwayne, he asked me that Jesus, oh, was he on the throne, was always on the throne? I told him yes, and he was shocked. But the physical body never was on the throne. Because when I say Jesus was on the throne, I'm talking about the spirit that was in him. For the Bible said Christ, which is the spirit, was in the prophets. Well, why was Christ on the cross crying out to his father? Showing you a separation in the nature. If we have God in us, there's a separation from the spirit of God that is in you and from your physical body. And just like we, the human family, cry out to God, which is the spirit that is in us, and that same spirit that fulfilled heaven and earth and the universe was that same spirit that was in that body, the son of man, the apostle, the bishop, the servant, the mediator, Christ Jesus. So here Jesus left us an example that we should follow steps. That in the time of trouble, who do you pray to? You don't pray to flesh. You pray to that spirit, which is the creator, the Lord of the worlds, that made the heavens and the earth. So the same one that that body prayed to or that the man prayed to was the same one that made that physical body and was the same one that was in that physical body. Do the people who crucified Jesus Christ, would they ever have a chance for redemption? The book of scripture says uh, when Jesus uh, was being led up to Golgotha, Pilate's wife had a dream. And she went to her husband and said, don't have nothing to do with Jesus. He, she called Jesus a just man. She said, don't have nothing to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things uh, in a dream because of him. And the ones that slayed Jesus, of course, was the Jews. And today the Jews, many of them deny uh, that they had anything to do with the death of Jesus. But the book let us know how they rejected him. Let's read this quickly. When, uh, when Pilate's wife uh, came to her husband, yes. so he washed his hands, the book says, in the basin and said, I find no fault with the man. Today, many tried to find fault with Jesus. Then they still try to find fault with Jesus. Now they tried to ridicule his name. Some said Jesus never came. Wow. Oh, yes. There are Jews that I've met said Jesus never came. He, wa he never walked this earth. And when he do come, it would be his first time coming. What moves you so strong to be able to be so articulate and so forceful and so easy going at the same time to get the message across? The book of Scripture says, What several things are written for time is written for our learning that we through pages and a couple of scriptures might have hope. What make me so forceful when it comes to the book of scriptures and standing up for uh, what Jesus gave his apostles is because 
they died for it. They was murdered. Some was murdered. Uh, Jesus was put to death over. Many of the prophets were slain. So if a man that's walking around here today and is truly dedicated to God and the principles of God, that same passion that was in the prophets and the apostles is going to be in him. If it's not, he's going to play with the Bible. He's going to misuse the Bible. He's going to take advantage of the people. He's going to mislead the people. He's going to misguide the people and he's going to destroy the people. Brother Williams is looking at me like he's ready to read. What do you have, brother? In the book of St. John, chapter 19, we'll start at verse 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto him, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Pilate didn't have no, no fault in him at all. But people back then had fault in him, and people today still have fault in Jesus. I want to go to a video clip. I want my technical director to pull up this particular video that I want. The minister of Farrakhan... Um, saying that um, his God is Elijah Muhammad. Interesting. Technical director, can you roll with that footage? Now those of you who are in love with Jesus Christ, I want you to know that a black man from Georgia was raised from a dead state, Elijah Muhammad. And you tried to kill him. And you thought you had succeeded. That's why when I was taken up on the wheel, he said, make known to them their plans. And tell them you got it from me, Elijah Muhammad, on the wheel. What was he asking me, pardon me, ordering me to tell you that for? So you would know that he escaped your plot to kill him. He's alive. He is in power. I want to introduce you. To Jesus the Christ. That man is on the wheel with his teacher. He's been up there now for 42 years. He said that God studied 42 years to deliver us from the hands of our tormentors. He's ready now. To now listen, I'm, I'm not playing now. They don't want to give you up. But I'm saying this to you, President Trump. The ball is in your court now. Wow. Pastor Jennings. <laughs> Mouthful of words. He said Elijah Muhammad is still alive. Elijah Muhammad died in 1975 from bronchitis. Uh, Master Farad Muhammad, supposed to be Almighty God. Almighty God, one, has no birthday. Almighty God has no beginning. Almighty God have no mother. He has no father because Almighty God is father. Almighty God have no descent, no relative, no beginning, no ending, not self-made at all. The God that made the heavens and the earth is not taught, don't have to learn, don't need to be delivered from anything nor do he have to overcome anything. Uh, 
Elijah Muhammad was a student of Farad Muhammad. And I have spoke to many men who used to be in the nation who are now Sunni. Uh, and many of us have discussed this subject of Elijah Muhammad supposedly being uh, a prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, and many of them have even admitted that he never made himself a prophet. It was later on that the ministers that was from the nation made him a prophet or made him a godlike mm -hmm. figure. Uh, if he is still alive, where is he? This will that he speaks about in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about a will in the midst of a will. <laughs> but the scriptures doesn't say that anyone is residing on this will. Uh, so I don't believe in no form that Elijah Muhammad is Jesus the Christ, was Jesus the Christ, ever will be Jesus the Christ. Now, the nation of Islam often used this term that Elijah Muhammad is, uh, is the Messiah to them. They will often make that quote that he is the long, to us, they would say, he is the long-weighted Messiah. And they just looking at the contributions that was made to the black community when he was living, uh, to the black man when he was living. But uh, the book of Scripture talk about the Messiah and said that uh, he died for all. He died for all humanity. And the book of Scriptures itemized how he would die. Because it be the man that hang up on the tree. Now, they ain't talking about as a white man, hang a black man, but it was talking about the actual crucifixion or the death of Jesus. The scripture says also that if any man come and say, here is Christ, or there, it says, believe him not. Let's read that. Matthew chapter 24, and we're at verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. And that's happening now. Jesus said, many shall come in my name. Saying, I am saying, Christ. Saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And shall trick a whole lot of them. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. So Jesus said, a whole lot of men will come and say they're Christ. There's a fellow in Asia that says he's Christ now. I believe there's a fellow in Europe that says he's Christ. There's a whole lot of fellows out here that say they're Christ. Mm -hmm. Then if any man. Give chapter and verse. Matthew chapter 24 and at verse 23. Mm -hmm. Then if any man shall say unto you. Lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So if a man come along today and say he is Christ and have a mass following, that don't mean he's Christ. Interesting. And this is the reason why I have to, with, with all due respect, I have to have them in studio so they could uh, give the rebuttal to your response.